Ukrainian-Polish relations that have been difficult in the past have taken on a new dimension today. The image of friendly Poland as an advocate for Ukraine in Europe and a reliable partner in confrontation with the Russian Federation has long been formed. The western neighbor of Ukraine is praised for the consistency of reforms. It is not only Poles that have over the years created such a successful and civilized Poland. The Ukrainian diaspora is the largest there. Among representatives, there are brilliant doctors, businessmen, scientists and politicians. All of them come from families forcibly displaced in 1947 from their ethnic Ukrainian lands to northern Poland by the communist regime. These were people who were able to adapt not only to the difficult conditions of post-war Poland, but also to recreate their Ukrainian community and world there, which were characterized by faith, folk traditions, language and deep respect for their ancestors. The change of Poland's borders as a result of World War II became a historical stage in the fate of all of Europe. After the Soviet army occupied the territory of Galicia, the question arose about the delineating the Soviet-Polish border. The leader of Ukraine at the time, Mikita Khrushchev, intended to annex all Ukrainian ethnic lands to Ukraine. Even a map of the Holm Oblast was made. However, the Kremlin rejected it, as a plan had already been drawn up for the post-war structure of Europe. In the final stage of the war, the Soviet Union saw the new Europe and the world in the post-war period differently. The Kremlin wanted to draw a map of Europe that would be more beneficial for the Soviet Union. New regime had come to the territory of modern Poland. With the help of the Red Army, the so-called Polish National Liberation Committee was created. It was formed in July 1944 in Moscow, something the likes of a puppet Soviet government in Poland. On September 9, 1944, an agreement was signed between the Ukrainian government and the Polish Committee for National Liberation in Lublin on the evacuation of the Ukrainian population from Poland and Polish citizens from the territory of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. The words of this agreement, the evacuation of Polish citizens from the Ukrainian Republic and the Ukrainian population from Poland, an important factor for both sides that had the aim of further strengthening of friendship and cooperation between the fraternal people, are now viewed as preposterous. The border should go along the so-called Curzon line. But to the east of this border, in the so-called trans curzon territories, there were almost 700,000 Ukrainians. According to the resettlement agreement, it was voluntary. It was supposed to end on February 1, 1945, before the Yalta Conference. The transfer of the Ukrainian population from Poland lasted until the end of 1946. It was carried out with significant violations of human rights, the rights of citizens, the outright violation of all the norms of diplomacy at the time. There was not enough transport for the resettlement of Ukrainian families. They were transported by old freight train cars with cattle. They were on the road for several months. Although the immigrants were promised compensation for the loss of property they had left behind, this did not happen. When arriving in Ukraine, it often happened that Ukrainian families were not settled in villages, but in counties, where they were forced to find their own place of residence. The majority of deported Ukrainians was sent to the eastern and southern regions of Ukraine, as well as to the Poltava, Vinitsa and Kirovograd oblasts. At the beginning of 1947, the governments of Poland and Ukraine made a joint statement on the completion of the movement of the Ukrainian population from the territory of Poland to the USSR and the Poles from the territory of the USSR to Poland. However, according to statistics, still 150,000 Ukrainians were left in the southeastern provinces of Poland. 
Supporting the idea of a national Poland, it was decided to move Ukrainians to the northern lands of Poland, which were former German territories. All this happened over four months from April 28th to July 28th, 1947, and this operation was called Operation Vistula, which was conducted jointly by the Polish and Soviet armies. It was carried out in a very cruel way. The Operation Vistula was a realization of both the wishes of the Polish Communists and the Soviet authorities. For the former, it was a way of gaining the sympathy of the Polish population, among whom anti-Ukrainian sentiment prevailed at that time. Making the final solution to the Ukrainian problem, the Polish Communists thus tried to get rid of the image of aliens and Moscow's henchmen. In the end, they did what the Polish nationalists and what the Polish society were aspiring to in the post-war years or even during the war. They essentially created Poland as a state without Ukrainians. In fact, they turned Poland into a mono-ethnic state. The formal reason was the alleged death of the Deputy Minister of Defense of the Polish Republic, General Karol Swierczewski, in a battle with a regiment of the Ukrainian insurgent army. The real purpose of the action was to disperse the Ukrainian minority among the Polish population, with its further assimilation and transformation of Poland into an ethnic mono-state. Such wording was contained in secret Polish documents of those times. On April 28, 1947, at 4 a.m., six Polish divisions and units of the Polish security service surrounded the territories in which the Ukrainian population was competently residing, and KVD units and the Czechoslovakian border guards at the time blocked the borders of Poland in the north and east so that nobody would have the possibility to get out. They were given two hours to gather their personal belongings. They were packed on carts. Those who did not want to go saw their villages burnt at night. And when they were transported to the northwestern lands of Poland, the so-called former German lands, in fact, people were left there with no means of subsistence. Another terrible fact is that the deported people were settled one or two families in the village, so that they did not form an organized community. There was no right to go back, at least until the late 1950s, early 1960s. People were caught and overly active fugitives were thrown into the Yavozhna concentration camp. According to the chronicles of Ukrainian and Polish researchers, about 150,000 Ukrainians were resettled within three months. During the Vistula operation, the authorities resorted to violence, houses were burned to the ground, and Ukrainian churches and cemeteries were completely destroyed. On July 29, 1947, the leadership of the Vistula operational group reported about the final cleansing of Ukrainian people from the territories and the successful completion of the operation. Polish historian Richard Ozetsky believes that the plan for the preparation of the Vistula campaign was agreed with Moscow in February 1947. A similar thesis is supported by another Polish historian, Grzegorz Motyga. The fact that the actions of Warsaw and Moscow were coordinated is not in doubt today. Because in October 1947, the Kremlin began the mass deportation of Ukrainians from the western part of the Republic to remote areas of the Soviet Union. The main objective of the forcible resettlement was strategically aimed at weakening the Ukrainian liberation movement in western Ukraine. I find it very important to have access to documents that help in forming the national consciousness of society. Verbal evidence can only be found in the archives. The most up-to-date history for young people is related to their relatives. Such histories and documents are the basis for the formation of a true historical policy on which the security of society depends. Based on the information and archival documents and self-education, you can understand the difference between what was good and what was evil in those horrific times. The Vistula operation officially ended in the summer of 1947. For Ukrainians in Poland, it was an open wound. They had long dreamed of returning to their native land.
to put an end to this on August 27, 1949, in the Polish Republic by a government decree, Ukrainians were deprived of the rights to the farms from which they were evicted during the Vistula campaign and left without their property in Pidlishia, Holmshina, Natsyanya and parts of Boykivshina and Lemkivshina. In 1947, the authorities could not reclaim and fully settle with Poles these so-called lands freed of Ukrainians. Scared of Soviet propaganda, they were afraid that the Ukrainians would come back and take revenge. In the 1960s to 1980s, the neglected Lemkivshina became something like Siberia for the Poles. Only at the end of the last century, evicted Ukrainians were allowed to return to their native places. However, for half a century, they had already taken root on new lands. Only in August 1990, the parliament of the already democratic Poland condemned the forced resettlement of Ukrainians. A few years ago, we published a book in English titled Poland and Ukraine in the 1930s to 1940s. It was a compilation of the most interesting documents of the Ukrainian and Polish archives. This publication caused a wide resonance in society and academia. The presentation took place at Harvard University and was reviewed by the New York Journal of Books. This once again proved that the history of Ukrainians and Poles has quite a lot in common. In our scientific work and research we want to unite with our Ukrainian colleagues, first of all on the theme of World War II and the fate of ordinary Poles and Ukrainians. It is very important, because the basis of these conflicts affects our relationships, thereby inciting a great deal of controversy. Today no one doubts that Operation Vistula was politically motivated. Officially, it was allegedly aimed at pacifying the Ukrainian National Liberation Movement. At the same time, the pro-Soviet Polish authorities carried out the action by applying the Stalinist system of collective responsibility, which could not be the basics of the politics of a democratic state. It was during the totalitarian actions of the planned military operation that not only Ukrainian patriots suffered, one sympathizing with them and the families of Ukrainian soldiers who defended their right to live on their own land. But this had an impact even on Lemko Ukrainians, who did not support the activities of the UPA. It may be a false impression that all these events lie in the plane of the historical hostility of the two nations, but actually it's not true. The fact of the matter is that Ukrainians and Poles are ready to overcome the past in order to adequately confront the challenges of the new era. And no matter how the politicians with extreme views try to exploit the conflicting facts of history, common sense and the logic of the friendly neighborhood policy are gradually getting the upper hand.